Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Memorial Peace video. And today I'm going to be talking about how skills work in this game. Now, some of you guys have left comments asking me to explain how skills work. Some of you guys get confused by the numerous paragraphs we get in the game, and I absolutely understand that. This game has come a long way from its year one units to its, well, now nearly six year units, basically right so i mean I'm, if you want to take for example i want to show you guys this bell crenel right look at this we came from having basically at most nine words in a combat skill to effectively for example we're going to take a look at this real really quickly like six lines of text basically in one skill so it's come a long way and i understand especially new players coming to the game it can seem very confusing but again this is just how every gotcha works passives and skills get updated massively over a long period of time and they become extremely long and convoluted so only players who have played for a very long time can understand it because they've been part of the transition but for new players it is extremely daunting so in this video what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be going through three teams in particular we're going to be going through all three of these teams effectively and we'll be picking out some units from these teams and showing you guys exactly how things work now of course if you guys go on to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more Don Machi and Don Machi Memoria Freeze content and of course leave a comment down below if you have any further questions regarding any skill or any specific wording or phrase let me know in the comment section down below I will try my best to explain it in that text itself or maybe we might do a follow-up video where I go over your questions and answer your questions regarding skills and updates. Now, also on top of that, let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see regarding, you know, skills or, you know, units and how they work and stuff like that. I am making a video soon on war games and the best teams in war games. Some people have been asking me to make that video. Don't worry, that will be coming out very, very soon. Um, so yeah. Like I said, I'm going to be going through some specific units in particular. And of course, with the light team being some of the best units in the game, I had to choose this team as a representative for the PvE side of things. Why does the light team work so, so well? In a recent video I made, I think I made it on the... I think I, it was the final trial video, right? I actually spoke a little bit about why the light team is so strong. I think it was the final trial juggernaut um, where we went for the S clear, right? You can go check out that video. I go into a little bit more detail about why the light team works. But the reason why the light team works just for uh, this video particularly, it's very cohesive. Everybody does something that will support everybody else. So for example, Bell is able to give the minus P res. Uh, Finn is able to give the minus light res. Fiana is able to give the SA gate charge. Haruhime is able to extend buffs and extend debuffs. Now you might be wondering, what does this mean? Well, that's what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to be going through Bell first and foremost, because Bell is probably one of the most complicated units because of his Hero Festa status. He does a lot of things that is even new to us, to be quite honest, because stuff like the barrier ability is completely fresh. So let's go over everything that this Bell is capable of doing, right? So first and foremost, let's look at his special arts, right? Hero's second strike. Now, usually when we're looking at a unit, there's two things to bear in mind one what type of unit is it you know what element what physical is it a physical attacker magic attacker stuff like that the second thing you're usually looking out for is whether it's a single target unit or an aoe attacker right now in this situation you can tell that bell is an aoe attacker because of the bracket foes now if it was a single target unit you would see bracket foe that means a if it's only foe, it, it only will attack one single unit. And if it's foes, it's a AoE attacker unit, a, a, attacking unit basically. It'll be it'll be an AoE attacker. So in this situation, Bell is of course a AoE attacker. Now, of course, he does a fantastic job as a single target unit, but that's another point and another, we've spoken about that many times. You've seen his quality in that regards. So let's take a look at his skill now. Ultra Light Physical Attack. Now, I want to start off uh, with this, basically. So, Ultra is a modifier. It is the damage modifier that is very, very basic and the easiest to understand because there's five different modifiers and all very easy to understand. So, you have Ultra, which is the highest level of damage modifier, basically. It is only available on uh, uh, special arts, usually. You'll never see it in a combat skill. You'll only see it in the special arts. Then you have Super, which is much more common now, especially in combat skills. And then you have High, 
medium and low low is something now we don't see that much of to be quite honest now we usually see medium or higher and even medium is barely on skills anymore it's usually on like additional actions basically so you have these modifiers basically that's very easy to understand now light of course there's seven elements you guys know the drill light dark fire earth wind water thunder basically right so you have those seven abilities physical attack physical or magic attack this will show you what type of unit it is basically right and now comes the tricky part so ultra light physical attack damage plus 40 percent per each self str penetration rate and critical rate buff skill so what does this mean right what does this mean so basically bell will get 40 percent extra damage per self str penetration rate and critical rate buff skill so for every str penetration rate and critical rate buff skill on him he will get 40 percent extra damage so you would think that he would cap out at 120 percent extra damage but that's not the case see the way the game works right is that adventure skills and assist skills are counted as two separate things in game so while you can't overwrite an adventure skill with an adventure skill like you can't you know stack two adventure skills together so say for example this bell gives uh, you know light attack damage plus 120 percent but then lazar is also able to give 40 percent light attack damage to all allies well that 40 percent wouldn't get added to the 120 percent it would only be the 120 percent light attack damage only from bell itself so bell's buff would only apply to him but the thing is right when you have an assist that is capable of giving light attack damage let's say for example all kitian gives 25 percent light attack damage that will get added on to the 120 percent so it's an extra 25 percent on top of the 120 percent that bell gives himself so that's two buffs basically so in actuality because you have your assist buffs and your adventurer buffs this will actually be 120% times 2, so he can reach a maximum of 240% provided he has STR penetration rate and critical rate buff skills from both the adventure side, which of course this bell can do. He gives himself penetration rate on his first skill and then STR and critical rate on his second skill. But also if you have assists that are capable of giving STR penetration rate and critical buff skills to this bell. So that is how it works basically so when you whenever you look at this damn it this plus x percent per self buff skill or target buff skill or whatever it is it is dependent on both the adventure skill side and the assist buff skill side so you have to keep that uh, cl close in mind and uh, make sure you be aware of the, of the fact that if you're fulfilling all these conditions because sometimes people will forget about one of these conditions and as a result you'll see a lot lower damage compared to myself or somebody else who's running a very si similar unit if not the exact same unit and setup basically right so yeah now there's also an additional part that says ultra critical rate what this basically means is that there is a extremely high chance like that we already have high critical rate and uh, me medium critical rate but ultra critical rate is like the best of the best that's the highest chance you'll ever get and this will basically mean that it's a, a extremely high chance to crit effectively that's basically what it is now it also says allies remove status debuffs and avoids ko times one only when hp is greater than one percent removed when hp is less than one percent so what this means is um allies you can remove any status debuffs on allies and then on top of that he gives and avoids ko to all allies so whenever your hp is greater than one percent basically in this situation your allies will not get hit by a one hit ko move eff effectively they will live on one hp no matter what so that's how the uh, avoids KO mechanic works, basically. It's just a matter of surviving a one-hit KO when your HP is greater than 1%. Now, if you go over to the second skill, right? Um, now, this is where things get interesting because a lot of people are a little bit confused about, like, the slow, fast modifiers as well. So, Indomitable Sword Plus is self-slow. Light attack damage plus 120%, agility penetration rate plus 70% for 5 turns. So what the slow ability does is me it means that it'll go last no matter what basically. It'll be a slow skill, you'll go, bef uh, you'll go after everybody else. The fast skill on the other hand is the opposite basically. You will go before everybody else. You will be given priority. And this is where game modes like war games will take advantage of these fast and slow modifiers. You guys might have seen the bell and ryu unit that's capable of going slow effectively right um and it's to their advantage because they remove and strip away agility buffs on units because they go last and everybody set up their buffs so you can just 
remove all their buffs basically through that ability effectively right so yeah there is that factor now you can see also on top of that agility and penetration rate plus 70 percent for five turns and no physical attack times two okay so as the the buff suggests you will get 120 percent light attack damage agility and penetration rate plus 70 percent i don't need to talk too much about that no physical attack times two is what it suggests so it nullifies any physical attacks that are Atta attacking this bell for two times only two times so if there's one hit and then there's the second hit after that the no physical attacks go away so that's something to bear in mind he also gives himself four additional actions of highlight physical attack on foes and 20 percent max hp barrier and removes p-res and m-res debuffs on self and avoids ko now i'm not going to talk too much about the avoids ko part so the 20% max HP barrier is basically a extra bit of HP you get that acts as a shield effectively and it's taking 20% of your max HP. Now this isn't a heal or anything of that sort, although it can be constituted as somewhat of a heal. It's more so just a shield if anything to be quite honest. Um, it adds on top of the HP bar in fact. So say for example you're going into Record Buster and you use this skill right and you're at full HP you get an extra bit of HP bar with this uh, barrier basically. It'll appear like an orange bar basically. So it's, it acts as a bit of a shield effectively. So that's what this does. Now, we go on to Firebolt Strike and you see fast super light physical attack with temporary strength boost. Now, temporary strength boost and temporary great strength boost is effectively similar-ish to the extra boost you get like this where it's plus 40% per yada yada yada. In this situation, temporary strength boost is about 40 to 50%. I know somebody did the math ages ago and somebody actually recently sent it to me, but I just don't remember the exact numbers, but it's around 35 to 50%. And great strength boost is something that nobody's calculated yet, but I presume it would be around 80 to 100% basically in terms of an extra damage boost basically. And ultra encounter rate, as it suggests, is a very, very, very high chance of not being able to counter any uh, of the opponent not being able to counter after you attack them with this fireball strike and then this uh this skill also removes damage reduction skills attack type all targets now let's talk about damage reduction right now i want to go to another unit right here i want to go to galmus and the reason why the stall team is so strong and why also astraeus is also very very strong right because what this uh galmus does right is he gives all allies um damage received reduction so allies fast damage received attack type all and single targets minus 40 percent what this means is they'll take less damage from all target attacks so aoe attacks from like foes attacks and single target attacks so st attacks don't do any damage as well now a lot of people get confused by what attack type all targets and single target means i mean it's pretty simple attack type all targets is your aoe attacks and attack type single targets is single target attacks now in this situation it's allies fast damage received minus 40 percent there are units that are capable of doing the opposite so if you take a look at finn right if you take a look at finn finn is able to give damage received attack type all and single targets plus 30 percent on foes which is obviously the opposite of that galmus's ability some people can get very confused by that but that's exactly how it works um and uh it's very very simple it's very very simple it's basically damage reduction and increased damage received effectively just think of it that way damage reduction damage increase that's about it um now in terms of the second skill for bell as well he's able to also inflict ap res minus 40 percent and hp heal 30 percent of damage hp heal 30 percent of damage is basically life steal it is basically taking 30 percent of the damage dealt on the enemy and recovering it for yourself allies str and critical rate plus 30 60 percent for three turns very very simple right very very simple right there and then of course you have warblade which is basically a similar ability as hero second strike except it's not got the additional stuff and it's just got the uh plus 40 percent per each self str penetration rate and critical buff uh cr critical rate buff skill now um the next unit i want to take a look at and uh, uh show you guys why she's so good um is fiana because fiana is capable of doing a very interesting thing on her uh buff skill agios amnesia allies str magic endurance agility and dexterity plus 40 percent which as it suggests gives a stats boost of 40 percent to all five stats all five major stats and essay gate charge gain plus 33 percent 
this basically will increase your rate of gaining the SA gate charge because if you see in the top right right um if you don't have SA gate charge it tends to go a little bit slowly the reason why we take units like this Fianna why we take assists like this uh eyes for example right 111% SA gate charge on self this Ali as well, who's capable of not only just giving SA gate charge, but also MP region and stuff like that. Um, the reason why we take these units is because we can increase the rate at which we're gaining SA gate charge, which will help us out tremendously by uh, giving us a lot more, you know, essays to pull off in a fight. Because in, in PvE contents, right, if you look at Record Buster, if you look at the final trials, if you look at Familiar Rush, Familiar Royale, the big thing in those events is the fact that you have to be able to pull off many special arts and deal as much damage as possible and deal and do it as fast as possible and the best way to do that is launching multiple sp uh, special arts right so sa gate charge is very 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 important as well light attack damage plus 100 for four turns uh, i'm not gonna explain that one because that's very easy to understand now plus three actions mid life physical attack and status debuff on foes and status buff on allies plus two turns now the reason why i didn't take a look at bell's additional actions just yet and explain what they do is because i wanted to show you guys fiana's additional action because it will knock two birds with one stone effectively um so effectively what additional actions do right some people have been asking me for a very long time what do what do these three plus three actions mean what does it happen on the same turn what does it mean gail tell me explain it to me so what these three actions do and what it means is that once you use agios amnesia let's say on turn one on turn two when you use holy thrust right after you use holy thrust these adi this additional action will be used once right so holy thrust into mid light physical attack and status debuff on foes and status buff on allies plus two turns that's what will happen and then on turn three the same thing will happen again if you use holy thrust another additional action will be used and then once again for the third time and that's it so it'll give you three turns of an extra attack effectively through this ability which is really really useful because these additional actions usually have very 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 good sort of like buffs supportability functions and stuff like that in this situation fiana gets a huge supportability function in the fact that she's able to extend status debuff on foes by two turns and extend status buff on allies by two turns what this means is that if there's any debuffs on foes right so for example the p res we even p res reduction we inflicted via bell or the light res reduction we inflict via finn that can be extended through agios amnesia similarly any buffs that we have on our characters say for example fiana's sa gate charge gain or light attack damage that will be extended by two turns via fiana's additional actions so what this does is it basically means that you don't have to keep reapplying those buffs and using the buff skills and as a result you can actually use your strongest attacks rather than on turn five oh i need to reapply my buffs or i need to reapply my debuffs now some enemies will tend to remove those abilities to be quite honest some uh, enemies tend to remove the buffs from foes like for example reveria record buster reveria removes buffs on foes some remove their debuffs revis does on turns five and turns nine basically right or turns 10 sorry turns five and ten, uh, turn six and ten sorry i should say turn six and ten for revis she removes her own debuff so you have to reapply those anyways but at least in a fight where you know th there are no buffs or debuffs cleansing going on for example the amphis bana fight the final trial against the amphis bana right if you go check out that video on not until turn 10 the enemy doesn't remove anything we can attack the enemy as much as we want and they don't cleanse it whatsoever same thing with the juggernaut once you set up the jug juggernaut the final trial juggernaut you inflict the debuffs you inflict your own you give yourself all the buffs and stuff like that you will be a-okay for the rest of the fight basically so there is that the, 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 there is a huge value to this status debuff on foes and status buff on allies plus two turns similarly i want to also talk about how good it is in war games especially for a team like for example the ailment team right so on the front line you obviously have every, uh, not ailment team st the uh, the stall team i don't know why i said ailment team the stall team right the stall team is very dependent on being able to effectively guard and protect the team right so what you do is you take an uh, a unit in the back line so say for example one of your front slot units die right let's say for example already dies 
this unit can come in and this assist skill will help out tremendously because what it does is it removes status buff minus one turn on foes and this is obviously at level 50 at level at, at mlb at max limit break it's status buff minus three turns so you're basically removing the buffs from your enemies effectively which means that you will be able to tank even more so so there's a reason why a lot of players tend to take a team like this basically into the fight effectively right um so yeah that's why fiona is super super nice and she also is capable of doing the opposite as well so you can see that she does status debuff on foes and status buff on allies plus two turns she's also capable of doing status buff on foes and allies status debuff minus two turns through salvation spear so there is that factor as well now you might have noticed the mp costs on fiana right and this is where in pve it becomes a problem because if you have 15 turn fights right the mp cost is extremely high right you're going to be spending a lot of mp and especially with the unit like fiana who's only got like around what is it uh yeah it's like 600 mp basically it's around 600 mp 584 mp to be precise actually it's 584 mp that's not a lot right that's not a lot that's why you have to take units like this Ali, who's capable of giving mp regen per turn um and on top of that you you want you want to take a unit like either lazar or Haruhime, who is capable of also providing a 10% MP heal on her single target skill. So it comes in handy there. Now, let's take a look at this uh, Haruhime, right? Because we, I want to talk about Haruhime a little bit in terms of what she's capable of doing at the end of her first skill. Which is 40% HP regen for 3 turns and 40% HP heal. So HP regen is effectively regen at the end of the turn for three turns basically as it suggests right it's only regening at the end of the turn 40 percent hp heal is procced when the turn when the unit actually does its action so harahime once she uses sakuna will give a 40 percent hp heal and at the end of the turn the 40 percent hp regen will also proc so that's how it works there basically with this harahime so that's pretty much what i want to explain about harahime in particular you obviously have the ultra hp heal again hp heals also have their own modifiers and stuff as well you have the str and magic 120 the reason why we all use Haruhime a lot is because she gives allies Esther and magic 120% which is very universal she also gives SAG charge plus 44% for three turns and additional actions of high HP heal and all these buffs again the reason why additional actions are so usable is because of situations like these where she's able to give so much to the to the team effectively right now I want to show you guys the additional action of Finn because a lot of people wonder how additional actions work and stuff like that right so like i explained once you use a special arts the next turn you use an attack the additional actions will go off right so or if you were to use let's say for example inspiring courage which also has plus three actions once you use those once you use inspiring courage the following turn the additional actions will be used so the reason why finn is so good by the way still to this day is because if you use a special arts on say turn four against uh, riveria for example right riveria is capable of removing your your uh buffs on turn at the start of turn five and at the start of turn nine effectively right um so what you want to do is on turn four you will use a special arts with finn right and then you'll use a another skill let's say you'll use leading spear so that you can get the sr and light attack damage plus 70 percent right but once you use leading spear because you used a special arts on turn four you can then use these additional actions to get these buffs even though riveria has removed all your buffs the next turn itself tracks of courage will allow you to basically get all of these buffs back up without having to worry whatsoever literally that's the reason why these additional actions are so good because you can play around with the enemy see what the enemy does okay turn four she's going to remove our buffs at the end of the turn and the start of the next next turn let's set up a special art so that we can use ad the additional actions to basically give ourselves even more buffs so that's where it comes in extreme handiness to be quite honest i don't know if that made any sense but it'll come in extreme handy so it'll be extremely handy there we go got there in the end so very very important to know why this finn is so good in terms of her special uh, in terms of his special arts outside of the fact that he is a monster when it comes to damage power to be quite honest he's insane um all right now let's take a look at some other units right um now you might be wondering why does the light uh why does the magic team do so well right now what what is 
the reason behind the magic team doing super super well right now in war games and stuff right primarily war games and normal contents you're seeing the magic team do okay but the light team i still think is a better universal team um in all honesty but the magic team is phenomenal in war games why it all comes down to nullifications right like we saw with bell right if a unit is capable of nullifying, you know, any physical or magic attack, you're basically taking no damage whatsoever. And with units like this Alize, this Hero Festa Alize, who's capable of giving null M attacks times two to all your allies, and then you have the Supply Princess Eyes as well, who's capable of giving fast null physical attack times two to all allies, merged with the fact that you can stack it with assist skills like this Aina, for example, right? You can actually stack null attacks with the adventurers and assist skills. You can't do adventurers and adventurers. There's a reason why people can't necessarily take like uh, this uh, this Ryu in particular. People can't just take uh, <laughs> people just can't take this Ryu and uh, Hero Festa and Elise and think like, oh, that's times for null magic attacks. No, no, no. That's not how it works. But you can do it with assists and adventures and the thing is you can do it as many times as you want as long as you have the mp for it and stuff like that you can use it as many times as possible and it's the same thing with the assist skills so what a lot of players do right is they set up uh hero festa Elise and supply princess in the front line set up with the null magic attacks and stuff like that basically right so you effectively use spark ignition and then use justice oath to give you, you yourself the null met magic attack times two you use Supply Princess Eyes and you use her for a skill no matter what, Raging Force, Null, Physical Attack times 2. And then you have all these assists that are capable of giving Null, Physical Attack and Null, Magic Attack. And then in the back line, you have assists that are capable of doing the same thing like this Chigusa or the Anime Gacha Anya who has Null, Magic Attacks times 2. Or Astrea or Ilya or this Elpis, right, who's capable or Artemis. Who's capable of giving null physical attack as well and you also have this ryu in the back line as well giving null physical and magic attack on her ability so basically what you're having is about 10 to 12 nulls basically across the board which is ridiculous effectively right and that's the reason why the uh, magic team does so well is because there's really no counter to null attacks right now in the game I wouldn't be surprised if inevitably they do introduce something to counteract that, especially with the amount of nulls they've introduced recently. There is a part of me that's thinking that there may be a counter coming out soon. But for now, this is the reason why the, the you know, physical magic team does so well in war games is because you have these setups just absolutely taking no damage because they're nullifying everything right it's not like they're even taking small amounts of damage they're just taking no damage whatsoever so there is a reason behind that basically right now the other thing i want to talk about is in war games there's a thing called the agility race right you want to be the first to go and sometimes you want to be the last to go and certain situations you would prefer to be the uh, be the last to go because units like this uh vesta or the Bell and Ryu uh, anime gacha unit that we got for episode one of the second part are capable of removing, uh, you know, agility buffs from the enemies. So what you want to do basically is you want to effectively make these guy guys go as slow as possible. So usually you would have an assist or you would usually give them an equip that would dump their agility down drastically. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why you're seeing, you see Vesta and Bell and Ryu go last is because they're capable of removing in Vesta situation uh SCR magic agility endurance and dexterity buffs which is insane because what that does is if you remove the agility buffs from the enemy you are able to go first because you've effectively slowed them down tremendously while you still have your agility buffs and everything still up of course assuming the opponent hasn't got the same idea of course right so there is that factor as well and that there is a reason behind why units like this vesta why uh bell and ryu for example right if you take a look at bell and ryu are so good because they are capable of doing these things where you know they 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 go slow because vesta is a magic unit magic units go slower anyways and then you have this bell who's gotten a slow modifier on his skill he's a slow super win physical attack and removes agility buffs and that's why they're so strong but that's why they're so 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 valuable to the team so there is a reason behind that and there's a reason why these guys are so good basically now 
let's take a look at the uh, st uh, the stall team. I keep wanting to say Ailman team for some reason. I, I don't know why. The stall team. Taking a look at the stall team. Um, a lot of what they do is very straightforward. A lot of what they do is very straightforward. So in Astraeus' case, he's capable of giving light res, ailment res, damage reduction by AoE and single target attacks by 60%. There's a reason why the new Alicia and Finn are so good against a unit like this Astraeus because they're capable of stripping away these things. But as you can see, there's a reason why the stall team does so well. They're able to give light res, which effectively gives him a resistance to element attacks of the light nature. And then, of course, ailment resist is able to, you know, protect him from any sort of ailment attacks, basically, along with, you know, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, if you take a look at the very bottom, right, you get to see a little bit of what they are capable of doing in terms of their passive. Okay, um, this Estrella doesn't have any ailment res initially, anyways. Um, but yeah, basically... You have this Astraeus who's capable of effectively reducing the damage he takes effectively from light units in particular, along with just AoE and single target attacks as well. Um, but yeah, it, this is the reason why the ailment team is so strong. You have uh, Artie as well, who's capable of reducing the opponent's agility, dexterity, critical rate and stuff, and giving the avoids KO ability, as well as... Of course, providing a buff to all allies of P-Res and M-Res HP regen and is able to remove SGR Magic P-Res and M-Res debuffs, which allows the team to survive a lot more because, you know, any debuffs on you are stripped away thanks to this arty. Um, We already saw Galmus, of course, we saw the damage reduction from his side, right? And then, of course, you have Ryu, who's also got a very similar thing to the Astraeus in that she's able to give herself a Water, Thunder, Wind, Dark, and... Uh, well, yeah, no, sorry. Water, Thunder, Wind, and Dark res by 80 percent which is really really handy basically along with the fact that they both give themselves barriers as well um alfia as well is capable of giving a agility p res and m res increase as well which is really good and is also able to reduce the damage received by single target attacks by 40 percent as well so you see all these units right there's a reason why they're really good for the stall team and you have to effectively also use your assist appropriately to make sure that they are capable of doing the same thing so for example this hestia from the fourth anniversary gives null ailment which is what she's primarily used for but also she's able to reduce the damage received from aoe and single target attacks by 12 percent this is of course at plus one at plus five it is effectively uh 15 if i'm not mistaken so there is that this uh hephaestus gives p res and m res along with the instant effect of reducing str magic by 40 percent on foes once per turn which is really really useful again great for the stall team um of course a lot of people have the cyber ops haruhime which is a better version of this hestia but hestia is capable of reducing the str and magic on foes again very very useful so you want to set up your assists that are capable of being supportive to the team the way this works right the way this all works is because you're effectively supporting the team that uh you know you, your assists are supporting the units and helping them work the way you want it to work so if you want to go slow you don't take any agility based assist and you focus on just trying to de deal as much damage as possible maybe right or if you're trying to be a little bit more cohesive if you're trying to make sure everybody's dealing as much damage as possible in a pve content you'll want to go for elemental resist down units you want to go for um you want you'll want to go for p res down assist units or m res down assist units uh, you want to go with elemental damage increasing units str magic damage increasing units stuff like that you will want to go for extra damage basically through your assist for pve contents whereas for war games it's all about working with what you have and working in working to the strengths of your adventures basically so that's how it works now i want to show you guys the ailment team before we wrap up this video um and i want to show you exactly how the ailment team works um so the ailment team is very 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 simple you take a bunch of assists that are able to inflict ailments on the enemy and you take a lot of adventures that also inflict a lot of ailments on the enemy so if we take a look at some of the ailment units right i want to see if there are some in the top uh, 25 units right because it'll make my life a lot easier potentially right uh doesn't seem to be the case so that's not a problem uh we, we'll go over to the par, par enhanced level list and we'll see here um so that'll be easy adventure four star uh switch to time limited actually go for dark because we can see valetta and uh we can see valetta and epimetheus um because both of them are capable of inflicting uh ailments so you can see right here right 
Epimetheus is in, uh, capable of in, inducing a fast 80% slow and a 40% chance to seal on foes with his additional actions. You can then also see um, that he is effectively a great option for the ailment team because of that. Because of that alone, he's capable of doing that. What you're effectively doing, and the reason why a lot of people take null ailments, is because these ailment teams will just bombard you with a lot of ailment inflictions. So they will infl they will try and do 50% chance to stun, 50% chance to seal, slow, uh, sleep. Uh, charm whatever it may be right if we take a look at valetta right for example valetta is a very similar unit right here so if you take a look at the left hand side she's got a 25 percent chance to seal and sleep on foes and some of these units also have a chance to reduce the resistance of the seal and sleep chance effectively so you your opponents become more culpable and more likable uh more likely to be inflicted by these ailments because of the fact that they're reducing their seal res and sleep res of course right and then on top of that like i said you bring in the additional factor of uh, assist right you bring in assist four star assist let's see what we have here um let me go to level descending because i know i have some assists that are capable of inflicting ailments um for example this crunchyroll hime one of my favorite units back in the day, by the way, uh, because nobody would run null ailments back in the day. So giving her the 45% chance to stun, really, really handy. Then you have uh, older units as well, like this uh, Hestia as well, for example, right? Who's capable of inflicting 60% chance to slow. And that's at plus three. At plus five, I think it was like 75% chance to slow, which is really, really good. Um, you also have some other units as well, like this, right? We, 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 saw, the, we saw the ailment team just a second ago. Um, but there are other ailment units that are capable of doing something along these lines um i don't remember um yeah this is another unit as well status deep of minus one turn but she gives herself two instant effects of when attack 75 percent sleep on a foe up to twice per turn which is really annoying because sleep is a ailment where you have to get hit to wake up basically so it's really really annoying in that regards um there is obviously the new lena as well which i don't have i think i only ended up getting the uh uh, oh no, I do have Lena. Perfect, I have Lena. Lena is a 20% chance to stun on foes, and then two instant effects of when attack, 75% chance a foe. So what this does is if you go, if you have her MLB, she will inflict the, she will try and inflict a stun first and foremost, and if so, that'll effectively strip away a proc from the opponent's null ailments, and then when you're attacked, she's gonna be able to stun a foe uh, anyway. So really really usable in that regards and why the ailment team is such a menace to face off against even if you have a null ailment times four unit or assist it's still very very annoying to face off against those units but yeah let me know if you guys have any other questions in regards to like setups and like skills and how they work i hopefully managed to explain everything in a in a good way in all honesty i know that obviously i can't really go into too much detail about every single skill otherwise we would be here for like an hour um literally for one single unit we would be here for like 20 25 minutes and then for a full team just one team alone it would be like an hour long video so if you guys have any other questions leave it in the comment section down below i will try and explain it to the best of my uh to the best of my uh potential to be quite honest and of course if you guys uh you know want to see more content hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video take it easy everybody have yourselves a good one Bye bye